views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. The truth is funny. With Colette Steffen, we'll have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network as she provides energetic shifts and consistent results in every area of life, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success. Many people who shift out of limiting beliefs roar with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. The truth is funny. Shift happens. Feel instant relief. Stay tuned for more fun and release struggle and suffering. And now, here's your host, Colette Steffen. Today, your guest host, Phil Free, is here. Phil has been using energy work since 1998. He continues to apply these techniques every day to facilitate improvement for himself, family, friends, and clients. You can tune in and benefit from it too. Here's your guest host, Phil Free. Hi, this is Phil Free. Welcome to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. I am filling in for Colette today. Uh, stay tuned for the next hour to experience the instant relief of using your intuition to solve life's most challenging problems. Shift happens every Wednesday at 8 a.m. live on the airwaves and in the archives at thetruthisfunny.com, transformationtalkradio.com, and at transformationradio.fm. And the energy shifts are also accessible through the Higher Self Network, if you're listening later. Um, it's my pleasure to share life-transforming transform, information and provide you with an opportunity to call in and delete energetic weaknesses. Shift challenges into possibilities. We'd love to hear from you. and Feel free to call in. The number here is 1-800-930-2819. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, psychology again. And, and energy work and uh, Enneagram, getting to know yourself and uh, how we can all improve. My guest today is Michael Diliage. How are you today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm pretty good. Thanks for asking. So um, we're going to get into this idea. We, we talk a lot about um, psychology. We talk about the Enneagram. The Enneagram is... Um, Talks about different types. Talks about nine different personality types, and we're going to get into that a little bit today. And uh, we're going to learn how each type can improve, and that's kind of the specific advice we'd like to give everyone, depending on what their specific type is today. So we'll see if we can run through everything, and uh, each type that is. And well, why don't you just give us a general idea of what it, what this? We're going to talk about an idea of direction of integration. Will you give us an idea of what that is? Yeah, so basically uh, the Enneagram is a map for living into your highest self and fullest potential. So direction of integration is basically a life lesson uh, that each type has to learn in order to fully grow and become their, their better self. Cool. All right. And uh, even though we're going to get into each type's specific direction of integration, um that is, say, which number they learn sort of fastest or most from. Um, we also want to emphasize that no matter what personality type you are, you want to take on the good qualities of all numbers. So even though we're going to talk about a direction of integration, really we want to eventually get to the point where we have the qualities of every personality type. Would you agree with that? Yes. I mean um... – I would say so. You def there's something to learn from every type because, uh, as we'll talk in the, in the upcoming in the show, that every number has their own strength and virtue. So we could always learn from any number. Get into it a little bit right now. Um, why don't we just briefly describe what a type one is? and get into what their direction of integration is. So if you're a type one listening out there, this is for you. Sure, yeah. So a type one is known as the reformer. They're usually uh, 
extroverts, sensors, thinkers, and judgers. Um, so they're usually very well organized, have a strong sense of justice, usually very uh, self-disciplined, and uh, like, like structure and things of that sort. Um, and they integrate into the seven. Um, so uh, the virtue, I would say, for the one when integrating is serenity because they learn to kind of um, – let go to their, uh, to a very strong held beliefs or rigid beliefs, and uh, they learn to be more open minded and, and open to different ideas. Even if they um, don't always agree with it, they at least open themselves up to different points of view, uh, to different ways of seeing it, and uh, it kind of gives them an open an open mindedness and a curiosity and a positive outlook in life. Great, uh, um, and also before we go into describing. More, I also want to make the point that when uh, one number is integrating or looking towards this direction of integration, like here with a one and a seven, uh, we we do want to point out that they want to take on the good qualities of that type, not necessarily the weak qualities of that uh, type. Correct? Yeah, yeah, of course. You don't like a, you, like a one would not want to become like the, uh, the become scattered and open and like do too many things at once, like a, an average seven, that would kind of defeat the purpose and actually exacerbate certain issues you'd have. Uh-huh. Right. So the seven wants to look at the qual. I mean, excuse me, the one wants to look at the qualities of the seven and uh, adopt those into their life more. And uh, by the way, I also want to point out, since we're not we only have an hour for the show and we're not going to be able to go in depth into every single type. If you want to learn more about each type, I mean, yeah, I want think, to listen. To. Sorry. Yeah. I think, I think the best source would, one, a very good source would be the wisdom of the Enneagram by Don Richard Rizzo and Russ Hudson. That's definitely a good starting point. Um, to kind of, uh, have to, I like to actually go further in depth. If you are curious about, um, your number and it goes definitely into the different levels of development and what uh, your direction of integration is and what that looks like. Right. And yeah, if anybody struggles to find that or for any reason, there's also plenty of good information online that you can find about each type typing in Enneagram and type whatever you want, type one, type whatever you want. So why don't we move along? Um, so we'll, we'll seemingly, why don't we jump from, um, since we did one to seven, why don't we talk about the seven? What are the basic characteristics of a type seven personality? So a seven is known as the enthusiast. So they're very upbeat, positive people. They usually, they see the world as a, with the glass half full, the joyous. They try to see the, the different point of views. They want to try different things. Um, so, so that way, uh, they're always usually very cheerful to be around. Um, how, uh, but uh, their life lesson, although, is that um, they need to sometimes actually not spread themselves too thin by doing too many things in fear of missing out on this or that. But they sometimes need to really hone in their skills and really try to uh, reach a mastery of something, um, which is uh, they so they would integrate into the five. Um, they would integrate in the five, and their virtue, they're looking for sobriety. Which is uh, which fives usually have that? Cause fives usually have a very like um, steady mind and a focused mind, and are really able to use their their powers of concentration to really like make big breakthroughs in whatever uh, field they they get into or passion they follow. Uh huh. Well, we were talking on the phone uh, the other day about this, and um, we mentioned that. Um, there's a so you like to look at the crossover sometimes between uh, the types in the Enneagram and then the Myers Briggs um, personality letters that people get. So, for example, um, in Myers Briggs, we have like introvert, extrovert, like an E or an I, um, or I or an E, whatever you should say, uh, and things like that. Um, what is the correlation letter wise between a seven and a five? And even though, you know, what can you say about that? Let's just put it that way. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Cause a lot of times uh, what's interesting and that's where really learning about this really helps is that um, you might actually integrate into a personality type that seems different. So you might, 
you might not right away under uh, like appreciate or initially see, oh, what do I have to learn from this type? But uh, because the letters are personality different, like a seven is usually an extrovert, intuitive, big picture feeler, put their uh, make decisions from a personal point of view and pursue or go with the floor. While a five can look quite different, they they're almost always introverted. Um, they either sense or intuitive, but they're thinkers. They look at things objectively, kind of like the way the pros and the cons. Um, uh, that's why they're actually called the investigator, like the way out the facts. And they're usually uh, judges. So, so that way, like um, they have a lot, uh, even though they seem different, there's actually a lot of things that a seven can learn from a five. Uh huh. Right. So that's very interesting. Um, we, um, just to be clear for anybody who may have lost there with that information, um, would you just uh, talk about why you um, why you even are interested in uh, putting the two Myers Briggs and the Enneagram together? What kind of insights does that give you when you look at both the, the, the letters and the numbers? Yeah. It, uh... I, I I would say that the Myers Briggs and the Enneagram are uh, two things that really complement each other. Because um, the Myers Briggs will talk about how you gain energy, how you process information, make decisions, and um, go about planning your day. And the Enneagram goes into like who you are as a person, what your strengths are, and and um, what uh, your life experiences are. So what it does is that the, you. It, they 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 help each other map uh, each other's like destiny. Oh, here you are. You're back. Hey, hey, sorry. Uh, you you went mute for like pretty much your whole answer there. So, uh, you want to give us a quick concise version of it? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, basically, uh, the Myers Briggs is you know, there's a lot of corollaries like between a num uh, a letter type and a number type. For, as I said, for example, a seven will usually be an extrovert, intuitive, feeler, perceiver, an ENFP. What if your body and mind were the compasses to the secrets, mysteries, and magic of life? Glenna Rice, co-host of The Questionable Parent, is inviting you to access all that is possible. Glenna is a 10-year certified veteran access consciousness facilitator who offers an amazing variety of life-changing classes and workshops. Work with Glenna from anywhere with teleclasses and workshops all over the globe. To learn more and see Glenna's current schedule of events, classes, and workshops, visit GlennaRice.com. What is a brilliant culture, and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Stephan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Thrive is what we experience when our mind, body, and soul operate as one. When we thrive, we excel on all levels. Thrive is the mindset that matters. It is essential to our being. Have you ever found yourself looking for the instruction manual on how to thrive? You'll find everything you need to help you feel strong, powerful, and peaceful in your own body. So don't waste any more time. Visit thrivebygen.com today.
Gifted intuitive healer and spiritual teacher, Sarah Luce, brings her unique style to the hit show, Small Steps, Big Breakthrough Radio, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month as Sarah turns reality on end and shows us how to experience expansive results with simple yet powerful steps. Expect an enlightening bend on what you currently believe is possible. For show details and upcoming topics, visit SarahLoose.com. That's S-A-R-A-L-O-O-S.com. Hi, we are back on The Truth is Funny. I am Phil Free filling in for Colette today. My guest is Michael Deliage. Before we continue, would you like to share your contact information with our audience? Yes, uh, again, uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, my contact information is m underscore g e l e a g at yahoo.com. Um, so that's the best way to reach me through email. If people have questions, uh, feel free to email me. Great. And people can email me at whatphil at hotmail.com. That's W-H-A-T-P-H-I-L at hotmail.com. And uh, if anybody wants to call into the show, it's 1-800-930-2819. Hopefully uh, we won't have any more technical issues. We apologize for that. Um, I think it's my internet service going on and having some issues over here, but I'm not 100% sure. But either way, um, we're going to continue. We're actually going to re-ask what I was asking you before we were having those issues, which was uh, what is the overlap, as you see it, between uh, the Enneagram and the Myers-Briggs, or why does it help to look at the overlap? Yeah, so um, what I have noticed is that with each uh, number of the Enneagram, there tends to be, again, not always, it tends to be um, – a pattern in terms of a, a letter or someone's letters and numbers. For example, we were talking about the seven. A seven will often be an extrovert, intuitive, feeler, perceiver. So sometimes kind of looking at those, like what letters you are, will kind of give you an idea, maybe help give you an idea of, oh, what, num- what number I would be. So it's, it's a good kind of like a way to like kind of accelerate or like get a jump start, especially when you're trying to figure out what number you are or someone you're curious about. Uh huh. Okay. Well, that's uh, yeah. So it gives us a little more insight, basically. Um, but yeah, I want to um, also just keep jumping in, uh, jumping into this number thing and their directions of integration. So we we to recap, we talked about the one type, and they have a lot to learn, or they can benefit a lot from learning from the qualities of the seven, and the seven. Uh, can learn from the qualities of the five. Now, what are the what are the general char- characteristics of the type five? So the five um, is called the investigator because they have a um, uh, they have a very strong power of concentration. They're very analytical. They like to live in their minds. Um, so, um, so and so that five, uh, you know, they definitely embody the essence of someone who investigates. But um, what they, uh, their life lesson is to actually integrate uh, into the eight. And um, so for five is that uh, what they, when they're struggling, they tend to have kind of analysis paralysis and uh, never feel ready, not, never feel or think they're ready to uh, actually engage with the world because they, they feel safe in their mind. So as they integrate into an eight, they actually uh, reconnect with their bodies, the um, they they learn to kind of assert themselves in a positive way into the world and kind of really share like whatever expertise they have with it. They engage oh. with the world. Okay, so um, is there any uh, interesting um, things to point out with their letter combinations as far as fives and eights? Yeah, so I mean, five and eights will have some overlaps generally in terms of uh, being the thinker and the uh, and judging, but uh, where they really differ is the extrovert introvert. Like a five is almost always an introvert, but an eight, however, is almost always an extrovert. So, the as a five integrates into the eight, is uh, they're more likely to engage with the world and not retreat with their mind and actually uh, and share whatever uh, share their talents with the world. So uh, that's how um, 
that's how uh, they adopt um, and can I like kind of mirror a little bit uh, the qualities of, an, of a healthy ape. Great. Now, why don't you briefly talk about the eight and then their direction of integration? So the eight is known as the challenger. They're usually like your leaders. Uh, they have a strong presence when they come in into the room. Uh, lots of energy. They are. They're known for. Um, they're known for taking the initiatives, taking leadership roles. They have a high amount of energy. Um, and their uh, their uh, life lesson is innocence. Their virtue they want to integrate to, which is like they integrate into the two, which is known as the helper. Uh, and what they learn from the two is to uh, the two's virtue is empathy. So as eight uh, learn to be leaders and use their strength of mind and, and sometimes even phys- physical strength, they also learn to like open the heart and um, to the the pains and to the people's situation in the world. And they kind of uh, use that empathy as a really driving force in their life to, to do good. So that's how an eight learns from uh-huh. a two and an eight gets into a two. All right. Well, why don't we move along since there are, you know, these nine numbers to go through. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about the two and uh, what direction they can integrate to as well? So, uh, so a two is is known as the helper. So they're very empathetic. They're, you know, there'll be a lot of people like a volunteer, like a lot of times, like you could see two as social workers or they'll work at like as nurses or, or do, like doctor or doctors or volunteer doctors or things like that. So they're, as I said, uh, they're very naturally very empathetic. Uh, but uh, what they, they need to learn is that humility and they integrate. Uh, that's their virtue. Oh, and they integrate into the into the four, which their virtue is equanimity. So um, fours are really good at um, at introspection and looking inside themselves. And, and while the two, you know, will sometimes uh, when they're under stress or might do too many things and volunteer for too many things and spread themselves out thin and neglect themselves. So as they integrate, they learn to kind of like. Um, kind of balance themselves out and uh, between service and also like deep reflection and introspection. Uh-huh. All right. So how about the, for the type four listeners, why don't you tell, you know, let, uh, inform them what, what are their characteristics and what their direction of integration is? So the four is known as the individualist, um, they, uh, they're very good at seeing um, what's unique about people, what's unique about the world. Um, law force are very creative types, uh, artists, musicians uh, in that field. They're very, um, they, kind of, they kind of see what's the beauty of things, what, what makes things unique. Uh, they're also very, generally very intuitive and they uh, pick up on cues of, uh, uh, on cues and things of that sort, and they integrate uh, into the one because what the, they learn also um, that not only to trust your intuition, but also they they learn to adopt the objectivity and the analytical nature of the one to kind of a use kind of objective information um, to really either like uh, strengthen beliefs or uh, beliefs that they have. Uh huh. So yeah, somehow we found our way back to the one, but we haven't gone through all the numbers. So if anybody's wondering, that's because the three, uh, six, and nine have a relationship there. And uh, so those those are the three numbers we'll get into next. Um, would you uh, talk, talk, which one would you like to start with? <laughs> well, uh, we'll just go. Uh, let's start with the three, and uh, we'll, we'll move in that direction. Um, so the the three is known as the as the achiever. So they're very um, they're very driven people, goal oriented. They usually know what their sh- abilities are, what their interests are, and are they really driven from that? Um, their uh, their life lesson is uh, that their uh, is virtue is authenticity, because um, threes fall into the trap of trying to uh, 
sometimes measuring up with people are very concerned what other people think about them. Are they living up to other people's expectations? But they integrate into um, when they're developing to a six, which is uh, with the, uh, the six is known as a loyalist. And the three will learn to use their abilities, their charisma, to serve like a greater good or a cause and things of that uh, uh, things of that sort. And they let go of the idea like, oh, I have to like meet people's expectations or keep up with the Joneses. Uh huh. All right. Well, how about uh, let's move along then quickly to the six then. So the six is known as uh, the loyalist. Um, uh, their virtue is courage. Um, they will use. Uh, they have also a strong need for service. Whether like you'll see them like as kids, a lot of times in the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. Uh, they're a lot of times too. They'll be like you know, police officers, firemen, and uh, they want to. They want. They definitely want to help out society. Want to make sure that people are, are treated uh, like fairly and. Um, and they integrate all the way into the um, into the nine, which is known as a peacekeeper. Because when six struggles, they uh, they tend to be anxiety ridden, trying to think of the worst case scenario, or they 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 can a lot of times see the world in terms of black and white. And uh, so, as they integrate into the nine, they learn um, to uh, at least relate to another point of view, even if they don't agree with it, but at least see that other point of view and be more inclusive. And then. Uh, and um, and be more accepted and give them and they start to really um, give uh, give them a sense of peace. So that's how a six integrates into a nine. Uh-huh. Um, so we're gonna be coming up on a break real soon here. Um, so uh, we'll get back we'll get back into the topic after the break. And you're listening to the truth is funny. Uh, I also want to quickly just mention that. Uh, you can find out about Colette's call to dance live events and float your boat Kelly shifting events and her book, The Truth is Funny, at thetruthisfunny.com. And um, you can also find all kinds of other things like her uh, correcting cards, her paintings at talesfromthevector.com and also at energeticupgrade.com. And you can uh, find her on uh, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, at The Truth is Funny with Colette. And uh, you can also email her at the truth is funny. Uh, sorry, info at the truth is funny dot com. Uh, if anybody wants to call in, the number is one eight hundred nine three zero two eight one nine. We'll be back to make some more shift happen. The knowledge book currently studied in 39 countries and 15 languages around the world accelerates our evolution, takes us out of depression, offers universal truth, protects us, and makes us stronger, both spiritually and physically. So if you are interested in the knowledge book, visit usa.thenowledgebook.net and tune in to the Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasik on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are you traveling most of your day? Do you want to take Transformation Talk Radio with you anywhere you go? Well, guess what? There's an app for that. Just go to the App Store on your Apple device or the Google Play Store on your Android and search Transformation Talk Radio. Catch all of our live shows no matter where you are. Thanks for listening. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. 
Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving. Even in the face of adversity, say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Hi, this is Phil Free filling in for Colette today, and we have Michael Deliage here with with uh, uh, me, and we've been discussing the Enneagram and uh, each personality type, as well as their direction of integration, uh, meaning where um, they might want to look to improve, first and foremost, anyway. Um, so we were talking about every uh, number, and we've gone through them all. Uh, we've reached, except for the number nine. So let's uh, finish off with the number nine here. Um, what can you say about the type nine, and what is their direction of integration? So the nine is called a peacemaker. Um, the, so nines are very good at, at uh, kind of, uh, seeing people's different perspective, people bringing people together, being able to kind of... Uh, understand different points of view and kind of at least bring them together or at least help up different people understand other p- points of view. You can see them a lot. Of, I think some of them are in arts. A lot of them are also into like caretakers, teachers, things of that sort. Um, so, a, uh, so one thing the nine does need to uh, learn is the virtues of the three. They, they integrate into the three. Uh, and what that l- looks like is that they start to to really invest themselves and their talents and actually uh, see, uh, understand how they matter into the world and uh, really, really bec- um, you know, became engaged and, um, and engaged in what they do and their passions. And they realize uh, that they also have skills and talents that they can contribute to the world like a healthy three would. Right. Great. So we've gone through them all now and, um, so if you're if the listeners have been listening uh, for this entire show, then basically you can start with knowing what your type is, and then from there learn your direction and integration. But if you've been listening to the qualities of all these numbers, really, ideally we want to take on the qualities of all these numbers. So everything good about all these numbers, that's what we want. Would you agree with that? <laughs> yes, uh, the all all numbers have a light, uh, a virtue that we can all learn and appreciate from. Right. And, you know, since we're talking about direction and integration so much on this show, uh, why would you say it's helpful to perhaps start there? Or why is that? Why is there even a direction and integration in your opinion? Because even the, the, there are nine different types. And so a lot of times, um, again, as we say, we can learn from all types, but each type will generally tend to have a struggle in their life, uh, something that might come a bit harder to them. So that, knowing what your type is and what your strengths and weaknesses are and your direction and integration is kind of like a good first step, a good roadmap into like a, you know, greater self-discovery and achieving your full potential. Right. Like a good starting point, a good thing to look at first. For example, why don't we, uh, just so people understand a little bit clearer, uh, you know, if we want, backwards with this in a sense. Uh, 
for example, since two integrates into four, as an example, uh, if a, as a four, if you're a type four listening, to try to learn first and foremost from a two, would you find that kind of challenging? Yes, because um, as a, you can integrate into a direction, but you can also disintegrate. So when you, a certain any type is under stress, they might start to adopt the, uh, the average unhealthy traits of their direction disintegration. So when you mentioned the four, they'll disintegrate into two, which is they want to help people and very empathetic, but then what they'll do is they might spread themselves too thin, uh, too thin by accepting uh, to do too many things, too many responsibilities, and they might actually end up burning out. So that could be the challenges mm-hmm. if a four disintegrates into two. Right. So... Every every number, like essentially, what you're saying is every number has helpful qualities, and then depending on your personality type, you know, you need those qualities more than maybe another type, right? Right, right. Great. Well, I've I've gotten I've received a uh, text request for someone to uh, for someone to uh, receive some shifts from me here energetically, and apparently, a woman is requesting uh, some shifts for her husband who's having open heart surgery. So again, since I don't have uh, either of them on the line and I can't get a baseline for how they're feeling about this, I'm going to make a couple of just very general corrections for a couple of minutes here. And uh, basically we're just going to take this topic as a pretty general topic since I don't know too many specifics, but for starters, anytime there's, uh, talk of uh, open heart surgery. I think there's a lot of fear. I noticed there's a lot of fear anyway that goes along with that. So that's the first thing that we're going to shift is uh, shift uh, people um, instead of being afraid of that, just being more neutral to it, being um, in a place where they can handle the outcomes either way. So it gets serious when we're dealing with open heart surgery. So we're going to just get everyone in a very neutral place, everyone involved. So uh, since it's a couple here that we're dealing with, um, we're going to strengthen that relationship there and the fears that they're passing between each other. So they may both be afraid, maybe one's afraid more than the other. So we're just going to strengthen that whatever the levels of fear are for them, that, um, that they can handle them and essentially delete them. And um, we're also going to strengthen that. Sounds like there's some sort of calcification according to the information I'm getting. Um, so we're just going to look at all the arteries, valves going into the heart. We're going to look at the circulation. And essentially, just going to make some shifts in that circulation. We're going to make some shifts into the chest, essentially. And um, the spine as well, certain vertebrae can certainly be stronger. So we're going to strengthen that for this person. And um, we're going to stre- strengthen their vitality overall as well. And um, we're going to also uh, strengthen anybody involved with these people medically, might be giving advice or performing any of these operations should they happen. Uh, just going to get everyone even, in a sense, energetically solid and even. All right, so uh, maybe I'll be hearing back from maybe this, uh, this woman is listening and maybe I'll be getting a message from her or uh, maybe not. If if I don't, uh, I'll do my best to update you if I get one in the future show. And um, well, I'll just get back to the topic here with my uh, brother on the line here. And um, so what is it um, that you find the most helpful when it comes to learning about the Enneagram and and the time that you've spent with it? The most helpful is that uh, when you read about it, uh, about the Enneagram, I think uh, it'll kind kind of bring the light of law things you might have someone might have intuitively felt their life but couldn't always like put into the words. So it will, um, in a lot of ways it's kind of like very satisfying because or validating because you might read something and say, okay, like 
even I mean I have my, in my own life story I do like notice these struggles or these qualities I have but I I couldn't always understand that and so it um and it also what it does by you know by reading the other types and it helps you understand other people's struggles and what their strengths are because we we tend to see things through our own lenses so. It also also opens our mind into what other people are experiencing and how how they see the world. Right. Yeah. And for for myself, it's um, it's also got a lot of insights. I just find that more knowledge uh, helps us uh, helps me anyway make more shifts happen. It gives me just a greater base to um, or greater foundation to uh, make the shifts from to really understand people. There's certain areas. So I wouldn't have made shifts if I didn't know this. So like when I understand personalities better, um, I know a little bit more about people's strengths and weakness very quickly. I don't have to know their life story as much. Uh, I have a lot of info on them or on their processes anyway. Um, from a, from a very early point in the interaction. And that's what helps me a lot for one and knowing also the qualities and, uh, faults or weaknesses, if you'd like, of each type, that also helps me because I can quickly, excuse me for the overhead sound of the plane, but uh, I can quickly zero in on um, what they need to shift. Often, very often, a personality type will have the weaknesses, so to speak, the imbalances that this book discusses. Uh, that the, the wisdom of the Enneagram book that you mentioned earlier discusses. And so uh, it's very, very helpful in that regard. Um, all right. Well, um, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, do you, uh, in your energetic uh, work, do you ironically see sometimes people are almost resistant to uh, almost uh, the life lessons or the direction of integration that they have to learn from? Well, certainly. I see that a lot in general. I mean, um, um, basically, uh, yeah, I, you know, a lot of people in general in, in our society, we're not really trained as far as I, I've seen, as far as my experience, um, to deal with issues of the self very well and issues of other human beings. We don't know that much about psychology, even when it comes to health, we know pretty much, but a lot of people don't really follow good practices. So we're kind of an undisciplined people a lot of times. And we, a lot of times we, there's a lot of reinforcement with poor values and poor ways to live and things like that. So, we constantly see that on uh, in the media and everything else. So there's constant resistance for people to look at themselves. I notice, and um, basically because of that, you know, uh, each type sometimes will struggle to even see what they are to begin with. They don't want to look at it. And then secondly, you know, they don't want to see where they can improve. So sometimes maybe they'll, they will accept a little bit about their personality type, but at the same time, they won't want to look at what they can do to improve that. They get stuck in that. And uh, before I expand on that, or uh, you expand on that, we're gonna hit another, We're hitting up another break here, so uh, we'll be right back on the truth is funny to make some more shift happen. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to TransformationRadio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. 
Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit SpiritFireRetreatCenter.com. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Tune in to the hit show, Raging Skillet Radio, Mouthing Off with Chef Rossi. Chef Rossi mouths off about different subjects in pursuit of breaking down walls and opening up your minds. She and Dr. Pat banter back and forth, taking from the headlines of the day on subjects that reach beyond what goes on in the world into your hearts. And go to theragingskillet.com to find out more and let Chef Rossi know what's on your mind. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific Time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, your family, and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBenton.com. Best-selling author, spiritual life, and business coach Joe Nunziata brings his higher energy and no-nonsense style to people who are ready to make powerful changes now. Wake up, step up, power up with a shot of Joe. Join Joe the second and fourth Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern for 30 minutes of high energy, no-nonsense, and powerful tools to make powerful changes. Visit JoeNuns.com. That's J-O-E-N-U-N-Z.com. Hi, we're back on The Truth is Funny, and this is Phil Free filling in for Colette today. Um, if anybody wants to reach me, they can at whatphil at hotmail.com. That's W-H-A-T-P-H-I-L at hotmail.com. And uh, if you, you, Michael, would you like to share yours one more time with the audience? Yeah, of course. The uh, best way to reach me is uh, through my email, which is M underscore D-E-L-E. A-G-E at yahoo.com. Great. So over the break, I got a couple uh, more information from uh, this woman who wants help with her husband. And it sounds like she's concerned about the aorta and the calcification in there. Um, so we're just going to get her neutral to where what, what the level is right now. And if it gets better or if it gets worse, all right? That's the first shift for her. And then for the husband as well, we're going to shift him to for the same thing. And then um, as far as, you know, how clogged is or how calcified is it, um, again, it's right now it's like the desire to know that even is coming from a place of, over concern. So th- that can shift even from moment to moment, even as we make these shifts, it could shift very, very quickly. So I'm getting that whatever it was a few minutes ago, it's, it's already breaking up a little bit. So, um, the, so I don't know exactly what the percentage is. It's already shifted. We could have done that at the very beginning, but I'm getting it's a shifting thing right now. And as far as, uh, she, the wife, I'm also received the message that she's concerned that, uh, or she wants her husband to get another exam, apparently, or x-ray or something so to see if there are any shifts since last one. So, again, in this case, we're just going to get uh, the, the energy balance between the husband and wife because it sounds like the husband is resisting. And um, let's just get them both strong to whatever outcome happens so they're not fighting each other. If they're not on the same page, then they're going to weaken the situation. So we're going to strengthen them to whether they have another exam or they don't. So either way they can handle either outcome. And, uh, so right now if the uh, the wife is concerned, well, if we don't get the exam, we won't know. Well, let's just 
use our other knowledge as well to know uh, knowledge such as our energetic knowledge and uh, and also just our general common sense and observation such as uh, if he looks like he's feeling better if he feels like he's feeling better if all signs are pointing in the right direction those are those may be good things to look at as well so with all that being said um, we're just going to get the the panic out of the situation um, and then um, the despair also change those. And uh, perhaps we'll get an update uh, at this point. Um, if you're listening, then I uh, hope you feel better. And uh, feel free to give me an update here. We have only a few minutes left in the show. So if you are listening, make it quick. Otherwise, we'll have to wait till the next show to know how, how you've done and keep the audience in suspense. Uh, yeah, so back to my brother here. Um, so yeah, you, we were talking about these this idea of like okay, people resisting uh, knowing what they are and resisting their integration uh, direction. Integration. Is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I think a lot of times, um, and that's what I want to ask you is in, in your energetic work is do you when you're working on people do you see like for example maybe a type five because they have an experience with the type eight might just kind of like tune out and say oh well I don't want to to do anything with these type with this type of person, and therefore they they almost like might resist or uh, or look away from like uh, from actually some the positive qualities of that number. Do you see that happening a lot? In your right, life? sir. Yeah, definitely, and it, it happens. I mean, for one, it happens all the time in the sense that you know, no matter what type we are, you know, um, if you had a bad experience when you were young with another type, you may be turned off from that type for a long time or, you know, or until somebody, you know, shifts or until it shifts you or helps you shift or, or until you get some more perspective and awareness and things like that. But specifically to your question, um, basically specifically to your question, um, that, yeah, if, if, you have a, a situation like you talked about where a five maybe had a, a an authority figure in their life. Maybe it was a father figure or a mother figure or somebody or a teacher or somebody intimidating perhaps. And that person was particularly scared by that authority figure. Uh, then, uh, then yeah, that's going to be particularly tough for that human being growing up if they can't get out of that because they, they have, you know, fundamentally they need to learn, things qualities from that eight personality but since they are turned off by it they'll resist it and think that they'll kind of what happens is they'll, they'll start to polarize themselves in a situation where they'll get into this framing of good and bad you know black and white where okay well my number must be good or other numbers are good but that eight number isn't good for example and they'll just be turned off to, every, to listening to anything or receiving anything from the eight and so that's definitely something we want to shift because there's you know we have people of all types who are not very great people and then we have type, you know people of all types that are great people so we can't judge people on their number type so much as uh, the quality of the human being in a sense Um, so other than that, yeah, we're, we're pretty much running out of time here. We have a few minutes left in the show. Um, I just wanted to, uh, thank you for being on the show and ask you if you had any other last thoughts or concluding points that you wanted to make. Again, yes. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Um, last thing of kind of re what we've been talking about in the show is that it's good to know, uh, yourself, self-awareness, your number, and know uh, your direction of integration and to know what that virtue is. That's a great starting point. But again, but again I also want to uh, emphasize or that, again, all types have virtues, and we can all learn from them. So even if they're not in our direction of integration or disintegration, it doesn't mean we should ignore them. They, all types and numbers have a, uh, can contribute quite a bit to the world. Great. Thanks for that. And uh, just as a final update here for those who are wondering about this woman who called in, uh, I did just receive a message saying thank you and that she feels better. So um, I'm glad I was able to make some shift happen for her. And um, if anybody wants to, they can call in to the show next time. Uh, I'll be back next month 
to do this again next, uh, it'll be the first Wednesday of the month. Also just want to mention really quickly for anybody who's interested, who's a music fan, if they want to check out any of my music, you can find that at feelfree.rocks. That's feelfree.rocks. And, um, basically there's uh, some info there. You can find links to some of my other sites. Like you may want to check out my reverb nation site, which is reverbnation.com slash feel free six, the number six that is. Um, and there's some videos on that. If anybody wants to check out it's some classic rock type stuff for anybody who's into that genre, uh, kind of on the hard side every now and then, but, uh, classic rock, hard rock a little bit. Uh, so we're running out of time here. We're about to hit the end of the show. Uh, thanks one more time to my brother, Michael. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks to the listeners. Thanks for, uh, thanks to Carter, the producer. And, um, We'll be back uh, in a month, and uh, next week, Colette will be back next Wednesday, and she'll be ready to make some more shifts happen for everyone. Thank you. You've been listening to The Truth Is Funny with Colette Stefan. Tune in to The Truth Is Funny with Colette Stefan each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network as she provides energetic shifts and consistent results in every area of life, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. The truth is funny. Visit the truth is funny.com for more information. That's the truth is funny.com.